Hey everyone, it's the tiniest one back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at what is a mid-range board from MSI which is the Carbon, it's the X570 Carbon, it's obviously for the Ryzen 3000 chips. Now it comes in around the £250 mark in the UK which is obviously quite a lot of money but all of the Ryzen boards are quite a bit of money and this one does come in amazingly down at kind of the lower end of the mid-range market. The boards can get a lot more expensive than this, but what does a, a mid-range MSI board have to offer? We've done a lot of testing, in fact we've tested it quite a few times, so let's find out. Okay, so we can start by having a good look around the board and you get uh, an 8 pin and a 4 pin in the top left hand corner. But one of the things I will say stri straight from the get go is I have already done quite an in-depth preview of this which you can find on the channel. That video is also available in the review on the main website which I'll put the click and all that sort of stuff up for. And when we talk about the performance and stuff later on, we have got some graphs and everything that we're going to be showing you, but there are a lot more over on the website. And that's done that way so that we have the kind of the highlights here, get the bulk of the points across, me talking too much. And then if you're actually interested and want to do more research about the performance and some comparisons, you can head over to the OC3D website and have a look. Right, so when we move around, in the top right hand corner there is a single CPU fan header. But just around the corner a little bit there are another two. There are only six fan headers on this board in total. At the opposite corner of the board, you, well down the bottom, you can see there are further three fan headers. There are none around the I.O. shield or anything like that where you would normally expect to have a header for a rear fan. And the only thing that I can kind of suggest is maybe think about fan extension cables or uh, PWM splitters and you might be able to kind of get away with it that way. Uh, six isn't too bad unless you've got a lot of case fans but again PWM splitters or maybe a PWM hub if you need to have a lot more. But the problem is, is where, where it is a slightly lower end board, that's how they've cut back. There are other cutbacks on the board as well. There's no power or reset switches anywhere. If you do run into any uh, issues with your post though, uh, maybe when you're overclocking or you have like a hardware failure and you're trying to work out what it is, it does have a post kind of readout set of uh, LEDs to give you an idea on where the problem might be. That's just above the 24 pin by the way. There are, down the side where you expect the SATAs to be, just four. Just below that there are two uh, external kind of USB 3 headers for like case connections, that sort of thing. Uh, but further round the corner at the bottom of the board there are two further SATAs and just by the side of those there are a couple of USB 2 headers as well for you know AIOs and that sort of thing. And it's when you scan along the bottom of that board that you do then find those three fan headers that I spoke to you about before. Round the back, the IO shield is a little bit light. But again, that's because it's a cut down board. It's not meant to be absolutely rammed full because that would jack the price up. If you need more USBs though, one of the things I would say is maybe consider getting a USB 3 hub. I actually run one uh, on my rig and I have it underneath the desk and I put all of my like... Um, audio, my keyboard and my mouse and everything into that and then it's just one cable that then goes up to the main rig itself. It's a USB 3.1 hub um, so it's got plenty of data throughput for that or bandwidth to be able to put that sort of thing through and it does help keep the cables that little bit tidy rather than sending your, your mouse and your keyboard and everything all the way up and round to your rig. Just run them into one place and you can tidy them underneath your desk. Um, you do get Wi-Fi 6 on this, which is fairly kind of consistent with all of the X570 boards. Um, you've got gigabit Ethernet. There is a HDMI header on the back. One of the things I will say about the HDMI though, is you do need an APU to run that. None of the, uh, so the 3600 and up, they do not have a uh, GPU on the CPU itself. So if you plug something in there, it just won't work. You do need to get something like the 3400G, which has an onboard graphics processor to be able to use that HDMI uh, output on the board. 
Uh, so for any of the others, you are going to need a dedicated graphics card. I apologise if I am preaching to the converted, but you'd be amazed how many times these points do come up in the comments on YouTube. Now, performance. Uh, at stock, it did kind of seem to find its way to the bottom of the graphs a fair bit, and that led us to testing it a few times as well. It caused us a little bit of a headache actually, because like I said, there was a lot of times where it was at the bottom, but we went back, checked everything out, made sure everything was absolutely spot on, and this is just the kind of way it came out. But, and another reason why it, it did make us wonder was it did respond quite well when we did put a manual overclock on. Uh, we didn't quite manage to get 4.4 gigahertz, but it did manage 4.375. We also managed to get 4,400 megahertz memory running. Now, people have been messaging me again to ask about the memory speeds. Basically, I have a 4,600 megahertz memory kit. So I then try and get that working. If it doesn't do 4.6, I turn it down a little bit. It's not a case of I've taken a 3200 megahertz kit and I'm overclocking it. I'm actually just trying to see what the memory cat or what the board can run memory at. So it's not overclocking so much, it's just trying to get something that's built for running that fast, see how quick I can get it running. And the difference between the boards can be some will do, normally the expensive boards will do four, six, and even sometimes a bit more, but the lower end ones do seem to tail down a little bit. But 4.4 is still in, or 4.4 um, gigahertz on the memory is still insane. Now, a lot of people, again, have been asking, you know, what should I buy? The board says it's only rated for 32. You've been running 36 and 4.4. Well, you know, that's just, that's the, actually the same across the board. It depends on the kit that you buy. My advice for Ryzen 3000 is 3600 megahertz is actually quite a sweet point. You do need to remember, by the way, that uh, there's a thing called the Infinity Fabric on these, and a lot of people have also been trying to tell me that anything above 3600 megahertz means the Infinity Fabric runs at a lower speed. Well, my Infinity Fabric with 4.4 out uh, of 4400 megahertz on the memory was running at 1800 megahertz, which is the full speed. The uh, Infinity Fabric side of things seems to be linked to the memory kit itself rather than it being uh, a blanket across the board. So um, I have had 4,600 megahertz memory running on other boards with the Infinity Fabric also running at full speed. So um, yeah, there's a, it, yeah, there's a lot of uh, investigation going on about that at the moment, but it does seem to have boiled down to uh, it's not as simple as some people out there are making out. Anyway, so the results, they did it did quite well with overclock not so well at stock one of the things i would say with a board that is at the lower end of the market is sometimes you need to kind of make people's life a little bit easy and uh, we obviously tested it with the 3900x and it, it didn't do massively well but the difference in the graphs is rather slight there's not like any uh, monstrous differences but I would say that if you are going to run this, then you'll do yourself a favour, um, A, keeping an eye on the BIOS. You are going to need to keep an eye on the BIOS in a way as in uh, keep upgrading it. So I'm hoping MSI will bring those stock results up to uh, par because I do think it's a BIOS issue. Uh, but if you want to go full bore and smack a manual overclock in, Maybe even you just go all cores 4.3 and leave it there or go use the Precision Boost Overdrive in uh, Ryzen Master, you will see a much better boost than what the stock board is offering. So, the board's all right, but it does definitely need work. The, the other thing that I will say is, be, yes, it needs work and it's quite expensive because of it, but that's the underlaying issues with X570. So, it's a good board. It's... An okay price when you just consider X570, but it's definitely one that the people out there that like tweaking and playing it will get the best from. If you're a fit and forget kind of guy and you're not likely to do the BIOS, you just want to click it together, maybe you want to uh, consider some other options before you delve in too deep and buy one of these. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one, finally getting this review done because uh, it's had so much testing done on it. But anyway, this is Tiny Tom Logan, out. Thank <laughs> you.